this is my ornamental um, wall mounted um, uh, PIR uh, outside PIR uh, light that's in my front door and um, it's uh, it's given up the ghost it's just on all the time it won't detect movement anymore the PIR sensor inside is gone so I thought um, it's a shame to throw it away it's quite nice it, if I give it a paint it'll look brand new again um, so uh, I removed the circuit from the inside and uh, I thought I'd troubleshoot it maybe it's repairable um, and after studying it for a while um, I kind of thought it's got one of these um, uh, capacitive dropper style circuits inside to power a 24 volt relay and I, I troubleshooted some of the components I, you know the obvious things transistors and diodes and check different things um, but uh, then I thought why should I waste my time if I can replace it with uh, one of these little modules um, from inside this sort of um, recess mounted PIR and this is a cheap one from eBay and the good thing about this type is um, it's a no neutral type so you don't need a neutral wire so it's just in line with the bulb the same way you would do a switch and the advantage of that is it, it should be more energy efficient because um, uh, this uh, this is half of the original board the other half I'm going to modify um, this type of power supply draws the same current whether the relay is activated or not because this uh, cap dropper needs to drop the 24 volts via the Zener diode half bridge rectifier setup and um, it's uh, effectively always going to draw I don't know maybe something like one one or two watts of power continuously and I I kind of think it's it's a waste you know just because it needs to be able to power that relay um, whereas um, this uh, PIR here and it's the the circuit I've, I've mounted in there just drill the hole in the original PCB this uh, this particular PIR because it's in line uh, it uses very little current just trickling through the bulbs neutral to power it um, and it's not even enough to power the bulb on so it's it's insignificant amount of energy it's only when obviously when it uh, via a, a triac or something uh, triggers the, the LED bulb that it's going to draw the three watt or so from the LED bulb <clears throat> so um, so what I effectively did was I took out the original PCB and uh, I removed um, some components that I could possibly keep for other projects you know some capacitors and some of the potentiometers and things um, and um, I I removed the tracks shaved them off and this piece I'll keep because this is handy it's got a relay on it 24 volt power supply a cap dropper style one so they're a bit dangerous but it's useful for a future product so um, project so I'll I'll keep this this piece and put it aside and I've just shaved off um, to remove the components and shaved off all the tracks so it's just a an, an empty PCB and drill the hole put the uh, pyroelectric uh, sensor the, the motion sensor the heat motion sensor infrared sensor poked it through this is the original uh, reflector mirror um, that uh, mounted over the original PIR sensor and it happens to fit when I put poked this through when I drilled a little hole it poked through there and it fits on there so I'm going to position this in exactly the same position so that it lines up with uh, the Fresnel lens there and it should be in exactly the same position as the previous one was so everything should reflect nicely and pick up the same motion in the same way and uh, what you would have to do here is uh, simply this is the, the light bulb connection this is the incoming mains connection so you would simply put uh, the live in there and then connect this in series with the light bulb so that it would the, the mains would come in go in here come out towards the light bulb and then you go out via the neutral and uh, hopefully that'll be a, a nice easy repair I had one of these um, already and I thought uh, that's a, a lot easier and saves me a bit of electricity as well um, over a long period of time I assume um, it I don't think it was worth repairing 
Um, this is a better solution in my opinion, especially to drive LED bulbs. In some cases, um, uh, the relay consumes more than half the power than the LED bulb would have. You know, just to, you have this elaborate circuit just to power this mains um, contact relay. And uh, it wastes energy, you know. And just switching the bulb on wastes, wastes unnecessary energy. You know, you, you don't want the light bulb to con consume um, just a bit more than the actual circuit consumes. That seems silly to me. So, um, uh, this will be a slightly more energy efficient uh, way to do it. Another interesting thing about this uh, this style um, inline you know neutral um, PIR is um, if this were to fail short circuit um, the worst case scenario would be that the light bulb stays on permanently so um, it's kind of handy in that way if water were to get in here and this would short circuit or fail horribly in there is no explosive failure mode for this because it's in series with the light bulb where that just drops the current um, which I quite like the idea of that whereas with the old old system it would have to take out uh, the circuit breaker if it, if, it, if a short circuit appeared because um, uh, it has live and neutral coming into this board first where this one is simply in line with the live and the light bulb now of course I started repairing this lamp without even thinking of making a video about it so I should have really filmed the board what it looked like beforehand I'll see if I can find similar pictures on the internet and I'll include them in the video but I think I've got the gist of what I've done so I think we'll glue this in place with a bit of uh, adhesive and that goes in there nicely but uh, Next time I just need to remember to to always film something. You always seem to get caught up in oh I need to fix this and then uh, forget to film it. Polarity shouldn't matter on these, which way around you put them. Okay, so I think that should fit in there nicely. So what I'll do is I'll apply a bit of adhesive along the edge there to hold the PCB down. The original clips on the one side of the PCB don't hold anything now so it needs a bit of extra support so some adhesive along the edge That looks like it's going to be in there pretty good. Right, and the original cover. Right, let's give that another test. sit very still now in theory if I move that's it it's uh, it works so I'd say that's fixed a lick of paint and she's brand new again so there it is back in the wall a lick of paint 
looking almost as good as new. So let's walk past it and see if it triggers. There we go, it just picked me up. So that's a good fix, it's more energy efficient. Now at least the unit itself doesn't consume almost as much power as the LED bulb does. It consumes a fraction of the amount. Every little bit of energy saving helps. So I thought I'd show you the original power supply for the PIR. It's, it still works. So I kept that little piece of the, um, the PCB. Um, I'll just apply it at 230 volts to it AC. Um, and it's got a 24 volt supply for this relay here. And I'll show you. I just have to gingerly make a good connection there. 23.5. So that's pretty much 24 volt. And then they've, they, they've provided a 5 volt supply for some logic there. There's another Zener there that gives you a 5 volt supply ish, 5 6 volts. And um, if I bridge these two out, you can hear the relay click. So this could this could be utilized to drive something else in the future. It's a five amp relay. Um, so if if something needs a, a either a twenty four volt supply um, or if it needs to be switched, the relay needs to be switched from mains. Might come in useful for something in the future. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel and hit that like button. Thanks for watching. See you next time.